Hello everyone, my name is Tomaruk. Up until a few months ago, I had very little PVM experience, so I set myself a challenge to learn all of RuneScape's bosses, one by one. The end goal? To get every single boss onto the high scores. The release of Desert Treasure 2 brings four new bosses into the game that I am really excited to learn. These bosses are the Duke Cecilius, the Whisperer, the Leviathan, and Vardorvis. And the first boss that we're going to be learning is the Duke. Ooh hoo hoo! The Frozen Tablet on kill count number three. Now this, this is a tremendous drop to get. Kind of similar to how uh, it works at Nightmare, you want to get the tablet that teleports you right there instead of walking a long time. So, let's see now. We have our Ring of Shadows uncharged, so if I put the Frozen Tablet... Okay, what is this? So, there we go. You hold the Frozen Tablet against the Ring of Shadows, causing the tablet to shatter, transferring the power into the ring. Oh, okay, so I need to put runes in this bad boy. Okay, so now I can put this on the ring. And we can add as many charges as we want. You know what, we're just going to add like 500 charges because I am going to be doing this for quite a while. So if we go there, I wonder where it's going to take us. Oh, that animation is so cool. Okay, so it takes us right here, which is going to save us quite a lot of time. It saves us traveling with an icy basalt and then running down here. Yeah, this is a hell of a lot quicker. This teleport is so good as well because it can take you straight to the Musfa or to the Duke. And there we are with 4 kill count on the Duke. Now, my plan is to get 50 kill count on all of the 4 new bosses before I decide on which one I want to camp. There we go, 5 Duke Sicilius kill count, and that means we are now on the high scores. And with that, that marks 39 out of 58 bosses now on the high scores. P. B. 2 minutes and 51 seconds, new personal best. Damn, I think the biggest problem with staying here a long time is you use so many stamina potions. Already, like, I don't know how many kills I've been here for, let me quickly check. So I've only been here for 5 kills, and so far, I've already went through 2 full stamina potions. Now, these are the little potiony things that you need to use uh, for the boss. I want to see if they're bankable or if I can take them out of here. Ooh, oh, they've been destroyed. That means they can't be banked or stacked or anything. Because I would have definitely done that, but, ah, Jagex, I've thought this through. Okay, this trip has now been going on for, whoops, <laughs> not paying attention. This trip has now been going on for seven whole kills, and this is what my inventory looks like. So it looks very, very nice. It looks like the biggest limitation at the Duke is stamina potions, because you do end up using quite a lot just to get around this place. But apart from that, he drops prayer potions, which is very nice, and he drops pizzas as well, so... You know, you're, you could stay here a long time if you take more Staminas. And... Another one done. Ooh, 100 Chaos Runes. Nice, nice. Ooh, what the heck sort of drop is this? Five Dragon Plate Legs. <laughs> uh, and that was a PB as well. Two minutes, 16 seconds. So I found out as soon as he spawns back... Like right now, now the timer is started for the next kill. So as soon as you kill him, if you can manage to run up, grab the mushrooms and stuff before he actually spawns, you're going to get a little bit of a head start. So that's why I've got the 2 minutes 16 kill there. Because I was very confused about this earlier. I was sitting, I didn't even take any mushrooms or anything. I just sat here, went to the toilet, gr grabbed a cup of tea and stuff. And then I came back, done the kill, and it was like 9 minutes or something. So yeah, the kill time has started now, I believe. So yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. A weird way of doing it, but, you know, not a big deal. Yeah, this boss is very nice. Very nice and cosy. I really like how it feels. Once you've gone into the swing of things, it's just so relaxed, so peaceful, so chill. Okay, now that I'm a bit more comfortable with this boss, we're going to go through a kill together just to show you what it's like. So those tiles I have marked means if you start there, you will never get hit by the extremities. And they have just spawned in now. I've noticed as well you can do tick manipulation on the mushrooms with the pestle and mortar. And we can get those a hell of a lot quicker now. And ooh, I got caught by one of the shadows. But yeah, we just go to the other side now and do the exact same thing. So we start on this tile here, run over, and it means we skip all of those red beams. We're never going to get hit with them. Do a little bit of tick manipulation on these mushrooms to get another one quick. And back over we go. And then we run down and mine some salt. We need 12 in total, just the same as the mushrooms. And you need to watch out for those poisonous clouds because they'll deal like 11 damage each on you. So 
Yeah, they can stack up. Then we stick all of the mushrooms and the salt into the vats, and once they are done brewing, we just take them out, and now we just have to throw both of the potions onto the duke to start the fight, and once it's awoken, we get a cheeky BGS spec in, and start. So I like to flinch at the pillars here because it makes it very, very easy to avoid the eye. And yet, you just want to make sure you attack after you see the clouds, because that is the damage in part. You don't want to get hit by those. So we just flinch him from this pillar, and keep going. And every so often, he's going to do this eye special attack. Yep, here it is right now. And you just need to make sure that you're behind one of the pillars, or you're going to get hit for huge damage. And then here we go, he is throwing the poison canisters, and he's got two of them. So I like to get a cheeky extra hit in whilst I'm running along the room as well. And there we go, another eye special attack, and we can get a cheeky extra hit in before he starts attacking again. And there we go, 100 chaos runes, kill count 37. And yeah, look at the drops here, you get loads of pizzas, loads of prayer potions, you can really just stay here for a long time, it is so nice, I really enjoy this boss so far. And there we are with 50 kill count on the Duke, and we're gonna leave it here because we still have three more bosses to explore. But overall I would say that boss is very very fun, it is nice and chill here, and you get into a very nice rhythm. But for now, I'm gonna be saying goodbye to the Duke, I will see him again soon. The second boss I'm gonna be taking on is the Whisperer. Kill count number three. 466 death runes. Very, very nice. I actually really, really enjoy this boss. It is a lot of fun. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, that was a very clutch kill. Wow. <laughs> I had so little health there, but I managed to get through it. Holy macaroni. Holy moly. Ooh. There we go. 5 kill count on the Whisperer, and with 5 kill count now on the Whisperer, that marks 40 bosses out of 58 now onto the high scores. So let's just tick that bad boy off. But we will be here for a little bit longer, I want to get at least 50 kill count on this bad boy, because I am enjoying it so much. I think this might be my favourite boss, it was definitely my favourite when I done the quest, uh, I guess I can't say yet until I've done them all. Okay, I'm going to be taking a lot less food now and a lot more super restores now that I'm used to it and I'm not really getting hit as much. There we go, kill count number 7 and a new PB as well, 4 minutes and 40 seconds. No, 3 minutes and 40 seconds. And look at that, we barely used anything there. What the heck is this? <laughs> what? 7 dragon plate skirts and they aren't even noted? Okay. <laughs> 1.1 mil, that is kinda sick. Okay, now that I'm more comfortable with this boss, let's give a, a little go. We're gonna go for a kill together. So, right at the start of the fight, we want to major and get a little bit of distance, and she will either do ranged or magic. It depends, it can be either or. And once she's done the three attacks, like this, one, two, three, we want to move away because those tentacles will hit you. And the first phase is pretty much just exactly this. It's not gonna change, it's gonna be the exact same. You just wanna make sure that you keep moving after the third attack and protect from either range or magic. So it is kind of a bit of a rhythm based boss, so magic, 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 move, and attack, and then magic, 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 move, there we go. Uh, oh, we're getting a special attack now, now this is the pillar ones, this one is very, very cool, so you want to make sure you stand behind the lowest HP pillar, then once she does a wave, you want to stand over the second highest HP, and then the highest HP, and then that's it, the special attack is over. But now she's going to bind us, so we need to wait for the bind. She's got the bind, and we want to get an ice barrage off on her, so that she cannot melee us, because you cannot protect the melee through um, protection prayers. It hits straight through it. So now it's a little bit different. She's going to be doing three attacks, but the last one is going to be different. So here we go. Range, range, magic, move. And range, range, magic again, move. Okay, now we're going to be getting a special attack. Oh, okay, so we'll click on the black crystal, and we want to kill the ones that say Vita over their head. And that's it, that's all you need to do. Uh, I usually try and get one more kill in, but I don't know if it makes any difference, to be honest with you. But that is it, that is another special attack, and she's about to bind us again. She binds us after every special attack, so we just get a freeze on, and continue attacking. Range, range, magic. Oh, and she does crosses now, not just X shapes, she does crosses, so you need to change up your movement a little bit. 
Oh, and now we are getting the last special attack. Okay, I really like this one. So you just need to make sure you stand on the light green orbs, and that's it. Don't stand on the dark green ones though, because you will take damage from that and lose sanity as well. So it's quite easy. Um, I'm not the best at this yet, as you can see, but yeah, you do get a lot of time, so it's very forgiven. And once again, we are just going to get bound again, so freeze again, and we just need to finish off the fight now. It will be a little bit different though, yeah. Magic, range, magic, move. Okay, so once you take her down to 0 HP, she will gain 140 health and go into the enraged phase, so you want to keep moving. It's always going to start with range, and every two attacks, she's going to change her attack style. So you want to run around her because these tentacles, if they hit you, they take quite a lot of sanity off you. And it's really as simple as that, you just need to keep attacking, keep moving, and once she's down, the fight is over. There we go, the fight is done, and we have got, ooh, some runite bolts, A4 runite bolts. The last kill of the trip, we get some runite ore, 449k worth, very nice. Seven mithril long swords as a drop, <laughs> nice. Ooh, nice, 70 battle staffs, half a mil worth of battle staffs, that is always welcome. Hey, another 70 battle staffs. We only have two more kills before we are done with this boss for now, but unfortunately it takes up so much prayer, so I'm gonna have to go and do another trip. And there we go, with 50 kill count on the Whisperer. That was such a fun boss with very fun mechanics, but we still have two bosses left to explore, so let's go and check them out. The third boss I'm gonna be taking on is Vardorvis. Now, I remember this guy giving me a little bit of trouble during the quest, but uh, let's give him a go. I think I know his mechanics and stuff now. I'm going to turn this game sounds up just a touch. Ooh. First try, baby. Ooh. I used up every piece of food in my inventory, but I got him. Ooh. That was tough. That was hella tough. Okay. Would you look at that? Kill count number three, and I get myself an Awakener Orb. That's a pretty good drop. 60 onyx bolts, 520k. That was a tough fight, but ooh, we have been blessed with fortune of potatoes, some prayer potions and combat potion. Nice, nice. That means we can prolong this trip and probably get another kill. That's also 5 kill count, which means we now have 41 out of 58 bosses now on the high scores. So let's just tick Bardorvis off. Let's go over a Vardorvis kill together. This one isn't commentated live because I find this boss takes up way too much attention and everything seems to happen at once, so commentating live is just very hard for me here. But I want to show you the mechanics and how the fight goes. There are four special attacks here, but one of them can be completely avoided by standing between these two pillars throughout the fight. So that's why I stand here. Another special are these axes that can spawn in any corner or side of the room, and you need to avoid them. If you get hit by the axes, you take a bunch of damage and you start bleeding, which damages you every time you move. So these are the main things I need to avoid. His head can also pop out of the ground during the fight and shoot a blue beam at you, and here you need to pre-arrange or your prayers will be disabled for a good few ticks. There's also a weird special where he sucks your blood and you need to pop every blood spot on the screen to get out of it. And if you don't, you take hella damage, but you get plenty of time to do it so it's not too bad. The final special are these icicle looking things that can pop out of the ground, but as long as you're standing between the pillars, he won't use that special. It's mainly when you're running around trying to avoid axes that they pop out, which does get a little bit hectic. The toughest part of the fight is that he can do a bunch of his special attacks at the same time, so it can get very tough avoiding axes, praying correctly for the head special, and avoiding the icicles. But so far, this is by far the hardest out of the three bosses I've tried. He is pretty damn tough. Since he can use most of his special attacks at once, it gets very overwhelming very fast. But I am really enjoying it here. He is very fun. Ooh. Yes, look how much stuff I have left. And wow, what a reward. <laughs> An easy clue. <laughs> Why is this on the drop table, man? What an easy clue from a level 784 boss. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. This strangled tablet, very, very nice. And that means we can now teleport here and it's going to make this so much easier because I am still getting absolutely blasted by this guy. He is really hard to kill. 
But with this tablet we can now attach it to a ring and we can teleport straight there which will be a huge time saver. So we can now teleport directly to the Stranglewood. Now how close does this get me? Yeah, that is a lot quicker. That's a lot quicker. I still have to run past these strangled guys. Ooh, I have just got the blood quartz. So I can put this thing onto the ancient scepter. So with the blood quartz, what it does is when I'm using a blood barrage or blood blitz or something like that, I can overheal by 10%. That will actually be very useful in certain things like the Inferno. I think that's the only one I can really think of right now. But the Inferno, it would be very good because that's one thing I've not done, as you can uh, see. But the only problem is I don't have an Ancient Scepter because I have never done Musfa before. So yeah, I'm going to have to get that done at some point. And that was on kill count number 24, I see in the Blood Quartz. Two uniques from this guy already. Oh, and this is untradeable as well, so it's kind of like the gems from Tombs of a Masket. You can use it to upgrade the Ancient Scepter instead of the Keras. Okay, I have a new rule for Vardovis. Um, I'm going to make him right-click only because <laughs> he keeps walking in the way when I'm trying to dodge the axes. So, NPC always right-click. Yeah, I, don't, I want to be able to walk right through this guy. Oh, there are three coming. We're going to go for the axe skip. And, yes, we got it. Ooh, and I know I'm being a scrub highlighting these axes, but they just make skipping the axes so much easier. That was a very, very good axe skip there. I was very happy with that one. That's the only axe skip that I was struggling with before, but now I think I've got it down and I'm feeling very good about it. Perfect kill on Vardorvis. Yes, you usually only get 400 soul runes, but if you get a perfect kill on any of the bosses, you get 50% extra loot. So that is why I got 600 from him. Ah, oh. there we are with 50 kill count on Vardorvis, and this so far is by far my favorite out of the three bosses I've already tried. This guy is just so much fun. But there is still one more boss for us to learn, and that is the Leviathan. I've managed it, my first kill count here since the quest, and damn, that was really, really tough. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go and reset for another kill. Hey, no, okay. So this is one out of the four bosses that you don't start by yourself, it just automatically respawns and starts attacking you. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So a teleport out is pretty important here. This web weaver bow is so OP. <gasps> oh, this scarred tablet, very, very nice. Now I can put this on my ring and get a nice teleport here. Oh, and with that scarred tablet kill, we now have five kill count on the Levethian, which now marks 42 out of 58 bosses now on the high scores. So let's tick that big boy off. And that was a new PB as well, two minutes and 11 seconds. So we want to go to the scar and Okay, so it takes us right at the start. Okay, that's actually quite a good teleport. I mean, it saves me a little bit of walking, because the last teleport took me right around the back of this portal. So it does save me a little bit of walking. Ooh, now that's a nice piece of loot. Some Dragon Bolts unfinished. Very nice. Okay, we're going to go for a second kill here, because I'm getting a little bit better at it. The Lightning Walk is the main thing I need to learn, but... Okay, we're getting a little bit better at this. Range. Oh, and we're on the last phase. Okay, I've got this ID tiled now, which is going to make this a little bit easier. <gasps> and I prayed the completely wrong things. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was praying them as it was coming out of his mouth instead of when it was hitting me. Damn. And there we go. Some ranging potions and sea turtles. Very nice. 180 air friends for that kill. Hell yeah, man. We are swimming in loot today. And there we go, another kill. The one thing that I need to work on is not standing in melee distance on the last phase because you can take like 50 damage for each melee hit. So, yeah, we're going to focus on that now. Uh, try not to get hit. Okay, lightning phase coming up. So, one attack, two attack, three attack, run. And then back. Between these two tiles. Yeah, baby, we got it. And then move away from melee so he doesn't chomp my ass. The kill is done.
and we get four anglerfish. Ooh, the trip has been extended. Oh, and I need to make sure to swap over to the correct bow. There we go. So I'm getting a little bit used to this now, so we're going to go through a kill together. So this is range and magic phase, and he's going to do this slowly. Then the boulders are going to fall, and he's going to start doing it again. So there we go. Range, magic, range, range, magic, magic, magic. And then back to range. Okay. Now he's going to start adding melee into the mix. So we have magic, 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 melee, range, range, magic, melee. And now he's going to start going fast, but it's only going to be ranged and magic. So magic, 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 range, magic, 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 ranged, ranged, magic, magic, magic. Now we want to stun him because otherwise he's going to start... Uh, throwing in melee into the mix, which, as you can imagine, is hard. So he's going to do the lightning phase first, so we, you can tell us. So, third attack. Go. Between these two tiles, that's why I have so many of those white tiles marked. It's so I can do the lightning run. And it's as easy as that, baby. And now you want to get away from melee range because uh, <laughs> he can melee you quite badly. Uh, so magic, magic. So he, once you stun him, he actually does go back a few attack cycles. Uh, so he's not going to be as fast this time. Magic, magic, ranged, ranged, magic, 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 ranged, magic, magic, magic. And now we want to stun him again because otherwise he's going to do that crazy ass thing where he adds melee into the mix, which I can't deal with yet. But now he's going to do his boulder special attack. So with his boulder, this is what I do. So just walk. Just keep walking. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> it's over. So now you want to stand inside this orb and then melee or attack him, I suppose. Oh, I was a little bit out, but it didn't matter. Uh, that is why the Web Weaver bow is so OP here, because uh, it just ends the last phase. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to take these prayer potions, though. Okay, so this is the boulder special attack I was talking about. So this is what I do. You just want to walk one tile. That's all you do, just walk one tile, one after the other, and then once you get about five, six, or seven, just run behind it. Yep, and that's it, that's all you do. Don't do it right at the front though. If you do it right at the front, you're just going to block yourself for the last phase, which makes it so much harder. Get out of here. And 37 uncut rubies, and that will be the end of this mighty trip. Javelin heads, and a PB as well, two minutes and seven seconds. That's a little bit better, 195 coal. There we are with 50 kill cone on the Leviathan, and we are now done here. Ah, uh, the gold ore. You can keep it, man. You can keep it. That was a very fun boss, and honestly, that was the hardest boss for me to learn out of all of them. I still feel like there's more I can pick up there, and more I can get better at, so I will have to revisit that boss at some point. Jagex have really outdone themselves with all these bosses. They are all very fun, and very unique in their own way, and I cannot wait to keep doing them.